uh, at the chromosomal level we have already studied uh, for the uh, using the chromosomal microarray so if any patient is coming out to be a negative <clears throat> and the patient is definitely it is affected so in that case it will go next test as a clinical exam or a whole exam sequencing the reason behind it again it's a resolution when i was talking about the resolution yesterday for the chromosomal microarray we were talking in terms of a kbs kbs is a kilo basis that is like a, a thousand base pairs okay so when yesterday when i told you the uh, there is a resolution was it was like a 10 kb so 10 kb is like a 10000 base pairs so that was the resolution now what we are doing we are improving the resolution more and we are coming down to a single base pair now now there is no kb no mega basis no giga basis nothing now i'm talking about a single base pair any change any mutation i think everybody understand the mutation mutation means any uh, change happened which is uh, not good it will have a problem in the human body or it will manifest in terms of any sort of a disease so mutation is a thing if any error happened or any mutation happened it could happen because of some of the genetic reasons also or it could be because of environmental changes also like when we say okay the person got a uh, cancer because he was having um, he was working in some kind of factories or he was having a tendency of uh, smoking or tobacco chewing so all these things can also affect your dna makeup or it can cause a mutation in your dna okay so whenever the mutation happens so it will always have an impact on your functioning of your body and it will lead to some sort of a disease it could be either the cancer either the neurological disorders or these mutation can happen as i told you it can happen genetically also or it can happen because of some external factors also okay so today when we will talk about a clinical and the whole exam so i am going to i will be using a term basically genes and i will be using like a terms like a point mutations or i will be using a index like a insertions and the deletions so as i told you now this is a right now the most advanced technology in the, in the genomics testing so yesterday it was a chromosome so today i'm going to talk about the genes and the point mutation so as as i mentioned now the resolution has moved from the kbs to a single base pair okay so if any change is happening at a single base pair so that mutation will be screened using this test which we call as a clinical exome and the whole exome sequencing so i'm just going to split these words when we talk about clinical exome sequencing clinical means uh, we have designed a panel there is a panel of a genes would be there so the humans are made up of approximately like 25000 genes okay so we made a panel of a genes of uh, approximately uh, it is uh, uh, just a second how many it's a 6000 genes okay so from we are not taking the panel of 25000 genes we have taken a panel of only 6000 genes and these 6000 genes are associated with some kind of a disorders okay so that's why we call it as a clinically relevant genes because these 6000 genes already have a some kind of a linkage with some sort of a disorders and we have designed this into a panel so that's the reason we are calling this as a clinical exam panel or a clinical exam sequencing because it is having only the clinically relevant genes which is the number is 6000 genes now come on to the whole exam whole exam means whole thing so whatever the number of genes are available or discovered till date in the sequencing we will be sequencing all those genes so as i told humans may we have 25000 genes so all those 25000 genes will be sequenced in the whole exam sequencing so this is a basic difference between a clinical and the whole exam sequencing in the clinical exam the panel is of approximately 6000 genes in the whole exam sequencing the panel is of approximately 25000 genes okay then there is another test comes after that which we call it as a whole genome sequencing so what happened in the whole genome sequencing in that we sequence the complete dna of a human or a complete genome of a human which is of 3 gb so we will be sequencing each and every base of that genome which is of 3 giga bases and we have to generate approximately 90 gb data so it's like a huge data and it is like it's a another level testing right now but that comes out to be a very costly test so that's the reason people are not using a whole genome sequencing right now very routinely in their diagnostic setup so in order to make that test as a cost effective 
पीपल कम अप विद आइडियाज की ओके वाई टू सीक्वेंस द कम्प्लीट डी एन ए और थ्री जी बी ऑफ अमन जिनोम लेट्स फोकस इट ऑन दो जीन्स विच इज ऑलरेडी एसोसिएटेड विद समाइंड ऑफ अ डिसऑर्डर सो Uh, Illumina has come up with a panel which we call it as a clinical exome panel, and then we thought, ki, okay, might be some genes are there which is not getting sequenced, so that information is missing. So then there is another variation has came which we call it as a whole exome sequencing. So it's completely on the clinician choice. If a clinician is very sure about the diagnosis, if the diagnosis, for example, if there is a F or uh, of thalmolage, this doctor is there, and he knows the patient is suffering from retinitis pigmentosa. so he knows the diagnosis and then he can say ki okay i have like approximately 20 set of a genes and i want to know ki whether they are covered in the clinical exome or not so what we do we just check ki okay those 20 genes are covered so for that clinician he need not to go for a whole exome sequencing for him clinical exome sequencing suffices the requirement over here because he knows his diagnosis similarly if a per doctor is looking for glaucoma so all the glaucoma genes will be there in the clinical exome so more crisp is your diagnosis you can actually go for a kind of a clinical exam sequencing when it is comes like there is a mixture of a like it is a how to say it is a cocktail of our symptoms are there and doctor doesn't know in which syndrome to fit in like for example the patient is having a muscle related problem the uh, the baby cannot walk he's having a developmental delays he's having a scissors also then he's having a heart defect problems also so it is like a cocktail of all the symptoms and doctor doesn't know ki what exactly in which disorder these symptoms are fitting into in such cases the doctor has to go for a whole exam sequencing because he doesn't have the diagnosis first of all he doesn't know which syndrome to fit in so in those cases clinical exam is not a ideal choice to order it's better to go for a whole exam so that we can connect the dot for them and we can tell ki okay it could be a maybe a mps or it could be any other enzyme disorder or any disorder like maybe it's a epilepsy disorder or it could be a paroxysmal disorder so we can connect the dot for them so for connecting a dot we need to have a information of all 25000 genes in order to give them a complete diagnosis based on that so this is how basically clinician has to choose which test to go for it whether to go for a clinical exam or they have to go for a whole exam sequencing and this is a basic difference between the clinical and the whole exam sequencing and then there is another uh, uh, criteria also like sometimes people think it is like a one time test okay it is not like they have to go for a retesting after some time so once your dna is sequenced your data is for the lifetime test so understand this test this test is not like a, a, a liver function test or a kidney function test every time you falling sick you have to order that this test no once you have done this testing if a patient uh, affordable like he can afford the doing this testing so i would suggest they should actually go for a whole exam sequencing the reason behind it once the data is generated it is like for for this life one single life they can use this data they can get it reanalyze n number of a time they need not to go for a retesting and all so it is like patient has paid for this much amount so ideally they should be getting a best testing out of it and they should be getting a best data out of it okay so uh, according to me yes the clinician has a two choices to go for it but if choice has to be given to the any patient or something according to me he should choose a whole exome sequencing the reason behind it first of all he get the complete information about the genome later on if anything is getting manifesting or anything else is because he should not lose because there is not a much difference between the clinical and the whole exome testing it's hardly a difference of some 5k 4k or 3k or something so it is like a one time test they can invest into it and they can get a complete information about it but yes there are some set of a patient who are non affordable affordable so based on that doc, clinician take a choice but this is what i am just telling ki it is a one time test the patient should understand this thing ki they will have to just give the one time money and they should get the best results out of it and the best data out of it okay so uh, Uh, no, no, no. I tell you how much data is going to be generated in my next slide. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So I'll be uh, talking about the data which in the in next my slides. 
okay so clinical and the whole exome sequencing so another word which is like exome we say so exome is like genes so here because we are sequencing a genes so that's why we call it as a exome so it is a collection of a genes is called as a exome sequencing okay Gen when we talk about a genome genome is like a complete genome you are sequencing so this is the difference between a exome sequencing and a genome sequencing when we say exome sequencing so that means they are sequencing all the genes when we talk about a genome sequencing so then we say okay they are sequencing a complete dna they are actually sequencing a complete 3gb of a human genome so this is a difference and this is what this meaning is like clinical exome and whole exome sequencing clinical means all the clinically relevant genes we will be sequencing in the whole we will be sequencing all the 25000 genes which has been discovered till date from the human genome okay so now this is a two uh, kind of a, a difference between a clinical and the whole exome so if you look at the clinical exome so we are providing you the deep coverage of 6700 genes we will be covering and we will be providing uh, it's a coverage of all the genes so the uh, genes hote na, these genes are not very small small genes they are a big big genes so sometimes what happens uh, when we are doing the sequencing so chances of having an artifact or a sequencing error has happened so what we say ki some uh, you have to tell to the doctor ki doctor we are doing a coverage of 200x okay so if i'm talking about the 6700 genes so how much mb size i'm targeting over here is 16.5 mb target size okay normally doctor doesn't ask it but i'm just telling it a uh, clinical exome is a 16.5 mb panel but doctor will always ask you or they will also uh, it is a usp also for the sandor ki we uses a target coverage of 200x okay so we will be generating a double the data what we are targeting right now so here the 3 gb data we will be generating so for the clinical exam we are generating 3 gb data so remember two things for clinical exam uh, we are sequencing 6700 genes panel okay what will be our target coverage 200x and the data output will be 3 gb now when coming on to the whole exome sequencing here we are uh, sequencing approximately 25000 genes oh god i made so many zeros okay please <laughs> i mean forgive me for adding one more zero here so we are i mean we are sequencing 25000 genes target size is 36 mb target coverage is 200x and here we are generating approximately 8 gb of the data so the question which was abhi recently came so that 30 gb of the data we generate when we do a whole genome sequencing okay so but 30 gb data is not sufficient for a whole genome sequencing we have to minimal generate at least a 90 gb of a data if you really want the good data so in the market people are giving you a quite a kind of cost effective kind of a testing because they are generating a low data for that like for the wg they are generating a 30 gb of the data but the chances of when you are generating a less data so there will be a, so many gaps would be there like says there will be a chunks where the region is not getting sequenced so that's the reason Sandor has maintaining that quality standard that we going to target a 200x coverage because in the market what other competitors are doing they are just sequencing at a 100x coverage. So if I do at the 100x coverage I have to just generate the 1 GB of a data for a clinical exam. Similarly if I do a 100x coverage for a whole exam I have to just generate the 3 GB of the data. But here at Sandor we are not compromising with the data output. We are not compromising with our quality and with the costing. So we are maintaining clinical grade quality and we are using a target coverage of 200x. That is a USP of a Sandor. And that is the, uh, we are the company. We are generating this, this much data. So as I said, 200x coverage for clinical 3 GB of the data. Whole exam, we are generating almost 6 to 8 GB of a data. Okay, so this is a one differentiator which Sandor is doing because we are not compromising. See, the moment you generate the less data, you can reduce your pricing. But chances of then patient is paying anyways this much amount of money for few thousand bucks. I mean, why should we give them a compromised data? So if a patient is paying a 13,000, he can pay a 15,000 also and he can get the good data with the good result because even after paying a 13,000 also if he's not getting a diagnosis then what is the use of doing this test so here we are just trying we are like when we say ki, okay we did the price revision 
yes we did the price revision the reason we had it because we are not compromising on our data quality we can also come down to the pricing and make this data half a, half the output and we can give you the pricing which you are looking for it so the reason i am telling all these points because when you are going into the market you have to defend yourself ki why sandor is not reducing the prices why, whereas the other labs are reducing the prices the reason is that only because they doctors doesn't understand this language of data coverage and all those stuff but if you are meeting the doctor just try to convince them ki sir there is a guideline ki how much data has to be generated so every time the guideline comes ki you have to generate at least a 200x of a data and your data output should be depending upon your panel size so it has to be minimum 3 gb and the 6 to 8 gb of a data so just make them understand so sandor is maintaining that quality standard we are not reducing your data output whereas the other competitor labs are reducing their output because to give you the lesser pricing so this is only the marketing gimmick only when they are reducing the pricing see any time you reduce the pricing there something will be compromised at that part so this is what your competitors are doing because i have seen their data i have seen the newbergs data i have seen even uh, medgenome data i have seen everyone's data and everyone is sequencing at 100x and they are generating that thing and then they are saying ki okay it's a negative report nothing is coming out of it but this is not the goal right now so sandor is maintaining the quality standard so please whenever you are meeting your clinician try to make them understand ki sir if you want the lower pricing then we will reduce our quality if they are okay with it okay fine then we will give them a compromised quality data okay so yeah so this is the thing then what are the indications sorry of thalmologist so these are the major segment or the today when uh, i told you we were talking at the chromosomal level today we are talking at the level of a single base pair or two to three base pair level so this is a resolution has improved so from the resolution when you started doing the karyotyping so the resolution was like you have to visualize thing under the microscope something which was missing in the visualization so though you move to a chromosomal microarray so then we told about okay 10 kb of a resolution we can provide you now today when we are talking about a clinical and the whole exome sequencing so now the resolution has came down to a single base pair so it is like a magnifying glass you are getting deeper and deeper and deeper so this is right now the uh, right now the end point of our right now whatever the technology we are using so this is a most advanced test later in the future maybe some more advanced test will came but right now today this is the ultimate answer or it is right now the end of the diagnosis end over here the next you can go for a whole genome sequencing if your pocket allows you to go for it Uh, sorry i didn't get the question you're saying that icmr is uh, uh, sorry i didn't get your question could you please repeat actually mean they like uh, this is only for humans or this can be uh, used uh, with plant or animals also mm, see right now we are talking about the humans but yes next generation sequencing is open for any species whether it's a plant animal bacteria anything so any genome you can sequence using a next generation sequencing so see next generation sequencing is a very broad term in that there are so many applications are there exome sequencing is a one application which we use it for a uh, basically for a diagnostic purpose then there are other application like there are transcriptome sequencing is there bisulfite sequencing is there then there is a whole genome sequencing de novo sequencing there are so many applications are there so answer to your question would be NGS is open for a sequencing for any sort of a species, fungal, bacterial, plant, animal, anything. Okay, but today, of course.
yeah so for the plant diagnostic it's a separate ball game for the plant animal yeah we can do that so that's a separate diagnostics but right now today we are talking about the humans only so we are focusing on the human genome basically right now but yes uh, it is possible to open for a plant or animal whatever this uh, you are looking for something like other than the human species but today we are talking about the human diagnostics okay Okay, so going on to the workflow from sample till report. So sample comes into the uh, front desk. So sample are basically for the whole exam and the clinical are basically the blood samples comes. Okay, and uh, then it is routed to the genomics department. TRF will be generated and hand it over to them. QC check would be done. They will isolate the DNA from the blood sample. If the DNA QC is good, we will further proceed for a uh, processing. And if the sample is not good, it is being rejected or something because of a DNA quality issues. We will inform the front desk to inform to the further concerned clinicians so they can do the resampling. Okay, so when the sample is expect, uh, accepted, it goes for a library preparation and the sequencing. Uh, so I'm not going inside what is the library preparation and the sequencing. Just understand, once the QC is passed, it will go for the processing. Processing includes the library preparation and the sequencing. So these are the few steps which is being given. So again, I'm not going inside this detail of what has been done in the library preparation. After the sequencing is being done, the data will be generated. So that data will go to the BI department, which is a bioinformatics department. They will do the analysis. They will do the interpretation and the clinical report will be released via front desk to the concerned clinician or to the concerned sales team to further route to the uh, doctor. Okay, so this is a workflow how it goes for a clinical and the whole exam sequencing. Then comes your sample type and the collection. So mostly, as I said, here for the clinical and the whole exam sequencing, we, we, are, we are maximum, we are getting a blood samples. So it can be like uh, two to three ml of a blood would be suffice or requirement. It's a blood has to be collected into the EDTA tube, which is a purple color vacutainer cap would be there. And then it can be transported at the four degree and whenever you are collecting a clinical or a whole exome sequencing or a chromosomal microarray, make sure try to collect the phenotype at your end also. So there will be a TRF. It has to be filled with the correct information about the patient name, age, gender, if there is a family history or something, or if it is a clinical phenotype information because for the analysis and the reporting, we can give you the better report if you give us a better phenotype. So always make sure that TRF should have a clinical phenotype information in order to give you the better results and the better diagnosis. Okay, so what is a TAT? TAT is turnaround time, which is a 40, um, okay, 45 days for clinical exam sequencing and 60 days for a whole exam sequencing. But now our TAT is being reduced from 30 days to 45 days. So for clinical, we have a 30 days and 45 days we have it for a whole exam sequencing. Okay. Then uh, these are the target audience. So as I said, target audience would be if you are visiting any multi-speciality hospitals, you can pitch this test to all the doctors, starting from your uh, reproductive, hematology, cardio, oncology, of uh, oncology you can hold for a while, of nephrology, immunology. So you can target all these medical segments with this single test only. And currently, we are getting a samples from NH, Apollo. We are getting us AIM, PGMR, LBPI, KMC. So all these doctors are sending us samples, which includes your neurologist, nephrologist, endocrinologist, oncologist. Sometimes for the germline screening, we got few a uh, few tests in the past. And then we are getting from the pediatricians, ophthalmologist, orthopedician, cardiologist, and the clinical geneticist. So these will be your target audience. And currently, Whosoever the subscriber I have mentioned over here. Ma'am? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, mm -hmm. orthopedic, it's a Sorry? In orthopedic, which panel will get, ma'am? orthopedic? Yes, for the orthopedic also we get. Because there are the patient which is having a rickets and uh, there are some bone related problems are there. So we are like uh, getting a samples from the orthopedic also. Ma'am, this sarcoma is related to somatic mutation or germline mutation? Uh, depending upon your sample type, sarcoma is basically like, uh, I think it's related to the somatic only. So I would say, uh, yeah. So I mean, again, it's an oncology segment. So I mean, currently we are not doing. 
Ya. Yeah? Okay. So again, coming to the market competence slide and our USPs. So who all are competitor labs? They are Medgenomes, LifeCell, Magma Genome, Lilac. Same, same competitors are there for us for uh, clinical and the whole exam sequencing. So how to defend in the market? Like, of course, people, when you going to meet the doctors, they will say, okay, we are sending a samples to the Medgenome and we are quite happy with that thing. So you have to tell us our USPs and the differentiator and how we are better than them. First thing, we are in the market from a very long time because uh, Sandor started as a company in 2008. After that, whatever the company I have mentioned over here, Medgenome, LifeCell, they came very later in the market. They came are uh, like in the 2013 or a 14. So these are, and Yoda, Red, Red Cliff, they just came one year before only. So these are all very newbies right now. But yes, with the cost competition, they have taken the market. So for the Sandor, you have to tell them what are USP. We are the into the market, in the clinical market for more than 10 years. We are the lab who are following a highly clinical grade quality. We are not compromising on it. As I said, we are giving you the target coverage of 200x. Okay. Another thing, we have a bioinformatics team which give us 24x7 support, which no any other lab will give them. Because I have seen the response time from all these competitors. If you put a query, it will take a weeks to revert. They take a weeks to revert, which is a very, uh, I mean, the doctors are really irritated on their response time. But here at Sandor, we have a bioinformatics team who can help you within 48 hours for the reanalysis request and with the kind of a clinical phenotyping, like if the doctors come back to us and say, OK, I want to give you a more phenotype, please reanalyze and give me a, a again the revised report or something. So that kind of a support, I can bet on that in the market. No, any other lab will provide. So that is a, one of the major USP. I'm not saying because I'm a bioinformatician or something, because I have seen that thing from all these companies, they doesn't provide all these support. So that is a biggest USP of a Sandor. Ki we have a BI team who give a response time in a very lesser this thing. So we have a fast turnaround time. Fast turnaround time, it is a little debatable topic. So I might not go into the TAT thing. But yeah, we are trying to giving you the match, which is based on the whatever the standards are going on in the market. Uh, cost effective, yes, we are trying to match the cost as and also trying to balance the quality also. We can't be reducing the cost by on the cost of a compromised quality data. So here you have to talk to the doctors. You have to make them understand, hey, sir, we are generating a double data from the market standard, which other competitive labs are not giving you. That's the reason our market price is little higher than the competitors because we are following so-and-so guidelines, okay? Then comes your highly accurate result. There are labs like uh, which are being mentioned over here. Sandor is only the lab who gives a Sanger validated results from the exome sequencing. In case if a variant is having a low depth, low depth means like we are, it is lying in the gray zone. We are not sure about it, whether it will going to confirm or not. So at Sandor, whatever the variation which is of low depth or something, we flag them, we take it for a Sanger validation on the FOC basis. No other lab is doing this thing. No any other lab. This is a, another kind, this is a, another USP of our Sandor because we because we know the patient has paid 15,000 for that. Now, if there is a low depth is happening or a sequencing artifact is happening, it is not a patient thing because patient has paid for the test. So it is now our responsibility to give them a validated result. And this is what we are following those ethics in our company. So please convey them ki what all USPs are there and how we are helping them in getting to the correct diagnosis and giving you the 100% accurate results. That is the reason this is our policy. If any variant is coming under the gray zone, we take it automatically on the FOC basis and we confirmed under the Sanger validation. Okay. Third is again, I mean, it's the same, the less response time, not only from the bioinformatics. Yes, we have a lab, we have a friend desk who's responding in our fastest time can anyone can respond. I have seen a response time of Lal Path. I've seen a response of all the competitor labs. Trust me, the kind of a response you get from the Sando lab, you will not get that kind of fastest response. Okay. So these are all our USP. When you go into the market, please pitch all these USP to them. 
then uh, this is just an analysis pointer i think uh, i think maybe some experienced uh, marketing people uh, sorry sales people are there they can defend i mean they can actually pitch about these pointers uh, because what happened every lab is offering a clinical and the whole exam sequencing but you have to differentiate on some point okay they will also say ki okay we will give you this data okay we will generate this data but how sandor reports and analysis is different from the other competitor so this these are the pointers over here if you will just understand because uh, we are using a software which is working on the artificial intelligence model no other lab is using that kind of a software okay that was a reason we can give you the more accurate result and the correct result the software which we are using is backed up by 150 databases this is a huge and the comprehensive database because the more good is your database good is your result and your report will be accurate okay so our analysis usp pointers are that we are using a ai based software which is a artificial intelligence based software it is integrated with 150 databases behind that it's a software which can help in a multi faceted analysis like we can help you with the point mutation analysis we can help you with the cnv analysis mitochondrial analysis in the single this thing this software is giving you a report which is acmg compliant acmg is a kind of a uh, government body or it's like a international standard guideline which is been uh, made so whatever the analysis and the report which comes from the sandor is compliant with the acmg guidelines and um, okay so this is again it's a, i think it's a software related hipa compliant and all so i'm not getting into this one so you have to just take a four takeaways point from this slide one we are using a ai based software so the chances of missing a variation is least we can offer them a multi faceted analysis like we can give them a point mutations we can give them a uh, copy number variation and the mitochondrial analysis we are backed up with the huge databases of a 150 which is no any other software is integrated with and our reports are acmg compliant and the clingen compliant so whatever the report will come it will be under the compliance of acmg guidelines Okay, so these are the takeaway pointers from this slide. Uh, Another, okay, yeah. So what, you know, Sorry. What is one fifty? Twenty-eight days, ma'am. How can it possible to be twenty-eight days? Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't get. No, other lab asking. Uh, what is one fifty? Okay, one fifty. These are the data sources. It is like a databases. Means different databases. One fifty. Yeah, different databases. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes, we provide on the free of cost. We are send we give the data on the free of cost. If the sample has been processed with us, yes, we provide the free data to them, and we also provide the free reanalysis request. Also, any any year, like whatever they want, a n number of reanalysis, we provide on the free of cost. Whereas the other competent lab, they are going to charge for the reanalysis. Okay, but yes, if a data is generated on a third-party lab and then they are sending it for the reanalysis, for that we will going to charge it. Okay, so for that it will be a minimal charge or something for the reanalysis. But in case if the data is generated in-house in the Sandor, they can ask for the reanalysis for an n number of times, which will be free of cost, and uh, we can provide them the data also on the free of cost. Okay, so these are the reports. So the first one is a negative report. So as just like yesterday's one, these are the patient information. We give the clinical phenotype, and this block says that no significant variant has been identified with so and so disorder. So uh, green color block says it's a negative report. Red color block it shows it's a pathogenic report. So again, the information comes clinical phenotype. Here we write pathogenic mutation has been identified with so and so disorder. here will be a mutation information there will be a table which will give the complete information about that mutation and then we provide the variant interpretations and whatever the clinical correlations so uh, next what happen in case a uh, positive like in case if you are like for example this report here this report is negative so what should be the next follow up testing in such cases 
if a uh, doctor done first as a clinical and the whole exome sequencing and the chromosomal microarray is not been done so the another second eye testing goes as a chromosomal microarray so these both the tests are goes in a conjunction vice versa if clinical exome is negative go for a chromosomal microarray if the chromosomal microarray is negative go for a clinical or a whole exome sequencing so the follow up testing would be chromosomal microarray if your exome report is negative another follow up testing goes like for the pathogenic report you got the mutation over here so the next it goes for a parental testing so now because we wanted to know ki whether the parent are carrier or not so it will go for a sanger sequencing for this targeted variation so the follow up testing would be sanger sequencing using a uh, i mean we will do the testing in the parents another test which can go if it is a negative report doctor can write a mitochondrial sequencing mitochondrial means if nothing is find in the nuclear genome so there is a uh, like um, in the human body there are two kind of a dna would be present one is a nuclear dna and another one is a mitochondrial dna okay so the next test can come is a mitochondrial sequencing where we sequence the mitochondria it's a very small dna it's not like a big big dna so it's a small dna so we can go for a mitochondrial sequencing another follow up testing comes your biochemical testing so uh, biochemical testing uh, again right now in current scenario do what doctor are doing they are writing test first as a exome sequencing and if they found a mutation related to a mps or any enzyme disorder they go for a biochemical confirmations and then they confirm ki okay whatever the mutation it is coming are it is correlating at the biochemical level also or not so another follow up testing can happen as a biochemical testing also for this one then negative report you can go for a mlpa testing repeat expansion testing so these are the follow up tests so whenever the report comes out to be a negative for a clinical exome sequencing so the what will be the follow up testing chromosomal microarray would be the follow up testing or it could be a mitochondrial sequencing or a mlpa or a repeat expansion testing for the positive report follow up test comes as a sanger sequencing in the parental testing okay so these are the follow up test if it is a positive report or if it is a negative report okay sanger sequencing mm. okay okay so as i was explaining about sanger sequencing is like a targeted sequencing when next generation sequencing or a exome sequencing was not there people were using a sanger sequencer so this is like a uh, how to say it's a low throughput sequencer it limitation is like it can do a targeted sequencing like Okay, so Sanger sequencing can do the targeted sequencing of that single point mutation, or it can actually sequence this single gene. But if I have to sequence a twenty-five thousand genes, I cannot do it with the Sanger sequencing. So Sanger sequencing is basically is a low throughput sequencer. If you are looking for a single point mutation, or if you are looking for a single gene thing. you can go for a sanger sequencing so these are the two sequencer one is a sanger sequencing one is a ngs sequencer ngs sequencing is a advanced version sanger is a lower version of it because it give you a very low throughput information so this is basic difference because i will not get into a detail what basically the sanger sequencing does that thing but this is a basic difference between a sanger and the next generation sequencing okay but whenever any variation is coming we do confirm it with the sanger sequencing because that is a targeted sequencer i have got some mutation and i need to confirm ki whether that is a genuine one or it is not the genuine one i need to validate that one with the sanger sequencing so this is a at the i'm not advantage i would say sanger sequencing is basically used after the exome sequencing from the exome sequencing you got some targeted mutation that targeted mutation can be confirmed or validated with the sanger sequencing so it is sanger sequencing is like a confirmatory kind of a testing ki okay whatever the variant you have screened or you have identified it is confirmed and it is a genuine variation over there okay yeah so this is the point of contact as i informed yesterday also so we will be like uh, uh, you can definitely get in touch with the akhilesh also he is a genetic counselor he can help you with uh, whatever the testing information you want or if a doctor is confused or a patient is want to get counsel so yes you can contact akhilesh bujjar as our genetic counselor we have a team of genetic counseling team okay uh, yeah. hello hello yes 
yeah ma'am uh, there is a question like uh, what are the chances of false positive result uh, uh, in sanger fibrosing test uh, in a prenatal segment if you false. use the amniotic fluid or any other sample okay uh, false positive test in a sanger sequencing sanger sequencing what are the chances that we got a false positive result in a sanger it shows something positive but if it tastes later on with the blood sample like after the birth of the baby because i i got this kind of case uh, see actually uh, uh see every test has their own limitation and the same happened with the sanger sequencing also so what happened with the sanger sequencing like for example as you said that they have tested on the amniotic fluid they have done the sequencing so there is a term called as a allele dropout or a allele drop in so because of this problem chances would be the page i mean the maybe the baby was having a homozygous mutation but because of a allele dropout it is showed as a heterozygous mutation so instead of coming out to be a two peaks there is only a single peak is coming over there so in that cases yes the false positive do comes in the sanger sequencing and yes there are high chances of that even the sanger sequencing also can have a false positive result so for that case yes you have to be sure that you do a bidirectional sanger sequencing because right now in order to save the money people are doing a unidirectional only they just design the primer they do a one pass single sequencing so and then you are not sure about it you have to repeat the test which i think in the other labs are not doing it so make them make sure they have to do a bidirection because it confirms if in the first direction they are getting a single peak might be in the bi direction they get a double peak if any such mismatch results or ambiguity comes they can repeat the samples so uh, so ma'am yeah uh, as an example like uh, if if a couple has a history of cystic fibrosis right mm -hmm. where uh, they lost couple of child mm -hmm. and it confirms in the uh, you know the exome sequencing now uh, in the next pregnancy Uh, what is suggestible? Uh, is it suggestible to go for a Sanger sequencing for that uh, particular problem or for a, a gene mutation test? Okay, so to get uh, the exact result. Okay, so for the cystic fibrosis, the first thing you need to establish which mutation is happening in the index first. Okay, so uh, for the cystic fibrosis, there are the two tests are available. One you can go for a hotspot mutation, like there are the five top mutations are there. which is a cost effective test if that comes out to be a negative yes of course the next course you can identify is you can go for a clinical exome sequencing so whatever the mutation will be identified over there then it can be further tested in the family to understand whether the parents are carrier of it and then it goes further for a amniotic fluid uh, testing for the prenatal diagnosis okay ma'am thank you okay i can yeah we are doing on no no we are using the same it's on illumina only so this is not matlab uh, ngs is based at illumina or illumina is different platform no 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 ngs is uh, see for the if you talk about ngs so there is a thermo sequence there is thermo fisher is there in the market for who offer that technology of next generation sequencing and another one is a illumina and uh, i think yeah currently these are the two major uh, technology providers so but illumina gives a good data that's a reason people are using more of a illumina as compared to thermo thermo is little working more better into the nipt testing or on the pgs segment because that is a little low throughput sequencer but when it's come to a generate the huge data or a uh, like you have to generate a large amount of a data in that case illumina sequencer is working better than the thermo sequencer uh hello ha abdul i think my contact question ka answer ka wrong aaya tha mam i don't know which answer is i get wrong mam sorry okay cmma mein well while you so yes 